logo himself. So LeBron James putting himself in great company, not only for NBA Finals Game 7s, but historically, we're looking, we're looking big picture now, LeBron gets his third NBA ring. He's bringing the whole family up to the podium, it looks like. He's got uh, a nice little net, a nice little trophy to celebrate with them as well. LeBron James and company at the podium talking about what ends up being a great win, an epic win for the Cavs and the entire city of Cleveland. Here's LeBron. First question in the second row on the right. LeBron, David Barkley, KTSF. First off, congratulations on, on the win. Um, so this being your third title, there's obviously a, a lot of footnotes that separate this, but does this championship resonate with you as being a little bit extra special, being that it's for the city of Cleveland, for the state of Ohio where you grew up? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, just knowing what our what our city has been through, Northeast Ohio has been through as far as our sports and everything for the last 50 plus years. You can look back to the Ernest Biner fumble, Elway going 99 yards, to Jose Mason not being able to close out in the bottom of the ninth. So the Cavs going to the finals. I was on that team in 2007. I was getting swept, and then last year I was losing 4-2, and and uh, so many more stories. And and our fans, they ride or die. No matter what's been going on, no matter, you know, the Browns, the Indians. Uh, the Cavs and so on, and all the other sports teams, they continue to support to support us. And um, for us to be able to, <laughs> for us to be able to end this end this drought, our, our fans deserve it. They deserve it, and uh, this it was for them. David on the left, <clears throat> David Aldridge, TNT. LeBron, I asked you a couple of times about that, about the notion of what finally winning one would do for yourself and for the city of Cleveland, and also, and especially for Akron. And I just wonder, now that you've accomplished it, you know, how, do, is it, is it relief? Is it excitement? Is it, what are, what are the emotions? Uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, David, you've been, you've been harping on it a lot the last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, for me, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm true to the game and, and I know what I bring to the table. And uh, I came back for a reason. I came back to, to, to bring a championship to our city. Um, I knew what I was capable of doing. I knew what I learned in the last couple of years that I was gone. And uh, I knew if I had to, when I came back, I knew I had the right ingredients and the right blueprint to help this franchise get back to it, uh, to a place that we've never been. And um, th that's what it was all about, David. I mean, uh, you know, right now it's just excitement. You know, it's not even relief. It's just excitement for us as a team, as a franchise, as a city, as a community, um, you know, to be able to continue to build up our city, uh, continue to be an uh, inspiration to our city, it, it means everything, and I'm happy to be a part of it. LeBron, at 3-1, with them having two on their racket at home, what do you think turned this series around? Well, I, don't, I mean, for me, when I came up here after we lost game four, uh, well, at home, I said, hey, listen, we've got to take one possession one game at a time, and we're going to Golden State, so, you know, we've got to fly home anyway, so why not have another game? You know, and, and I believed in that. And my guys believe in me as their leader um, every single day. I preach to them every single day. Um, I'm their leader, and, uh, and they allow me to lead those, lead those guys every single night. And I was just true to that. I believed, and um, nobody else believed besides the, the other 14 guys and our coaching staff and our fans. Um, you know, so, you know, just, just going out and executing and putting things together and making plays, and we was able to do that. Mike? And Mike Wise on ESPN. LeBron, when you're sitting on the bench uh, before the game and the, the national anthem, you seem to be deep in thought. Did you what was what was really going through your mind at that point? Uh, just zero on in on what needs to be done to help us win. Uh, you know, I, obviously I put the, the effort into it, but you know, just thinking about the game. You know, thinking about the plays, understanding they're going to make a run. They're a great team. Understanding we're going we're going to make some mistakes, but you know, it's how we come back from it, and how we move on to the next possession. And then also just I'm um, just living in the moment. I told my guys before the game, listen, um, there is a game to be played, but there's not many guys, there's not many teams that get an opportunity to be in the NBA Finals in a game seven. It's just not. Yeah. Um, and, and this is my second one. And uh, I'm able to say that I've been victorious twice in, in, in game seven. So uh, yeah, I just told the guys, don't take this for granted. Don't take it for granted. Uh, let's go out. And you know, our coaching staff gave us a great plan. And let's go out and execute it. 
You guys are losing tears there, J.R. Smith. It's a real genuine scene. What what um, what what comes to your mind? All the people that were for you when you were young. What, what has happened? A little bit of everything. I think all the emotions, everything. I, obviously, I know what Jr. has been through in his career. People counting him out and saying he's a he's this, he's that. Not understanding. Uh, you can't have that, Mama. That's not yours. You can't have that. That's for Daddy. Uh, but just understand what Jr. has been through, you know, and, and people just saying that, you know, there's no way he can he can be a winner, you know. And we, when our GM uh, came to us last year and said, hey, we got a not we got a deal to uh, get uh, Timothy Miles Golf and get Iman Shumpert, and the Knicks are going to throw in Jr. I was like, what? They're going to throw in Jr. into the deal? And I was like, okay, I got him, I got him. And um, Jr. turned himself into not only a, a, a huge boost to our team, but he turned himself into a two-way player, both sides of the floor. And uh, I think those emotions came out of Jr. at the end of those games. Those emotions came out of me just leading 14 guys and understanding, um, like I said, what our city's been through for the last 50 plus years since Jim Brown. And um, and then also just people just counting me out. You know, you know, throughout my 13-year career. I've done nothing but be true to the game, um, give everything I got to the game, uh, put my heart, my, my blood, sweat, tears to the game, and people still want to doubt what I'm capable of doing. So um, that was a, a little icing on the cake, you know, for myself to, to you know, just let me know that everything I've done, um, you know, it results in this. And they say hard work pays off, and that was that's what happened tonight. Jeff, all the way in the back. LeBron, Jeff Zilg at USA Today. What is it about the athlete's mind or your mind that you don't feel that 3-1 is insurmountable, especially against this team? At And you got to win two here. And, and then the last three games, the, the fire that you maybe play, or were you fueled by anything that happened between you and Draymond and Clay's words to give you extra fire in these three games? Oh Well, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you're down 3-1. And we got to come here. We got to come here and win. Um, we had to win in this building anyways. I mean, we only get three games at home. So even if we sweep the home series in a seven-game series, we got to win here anyway. So game five was a, a great opportunity for us to try, to try to seize that. And we came out with a great game plan. Our coaching staff gave us a great game plan, and we was able to send the game back home uh, down 3-2. And, you know, we know our fans. Our, our fans give us everything, and we was able to give it back to them. And, you know, once we get to a game seven, I take my chances versus anybody, versus any team. You give me one game, you give me 48 minutes, I take my chances. And, uh, you know, once we got to a game seven, I was just confident. I knew what I was capable of doing. I knew my guys would uh, allow me to lead them throughout the throughout 48 minutes, and uh, and they did that. Up here in the front. LeBron right here. Steve Futterman from CBS News. Your story is a bit like a, a Greek drama. You come to the Cavaliers, a homegrown product. You leave, you come back saying that you want to – win for the city. Can you talk about what you want to tell the Cleveland fans, the ones that got mad at you, the ones who never got mad at you, and also right now you're an emotional person. What is going through your heart and mind right now? Uh, uh, what's going through my mind is I'm ready to get back to Cleveland. I can't wait to get off that plane and hold that trophy up and see all our fans at the uh, at the terminal, you know, uh, IX Jet Center, and uh, I know they're going to be ready. I'm almost done, but I'm almost done, I promise. So. I can't wait to just give the emotion back to him. <laughs> Looking forward to it. That's all. And what, 